Hey everyone, it's been about two weeks since we were at this location. Today's a pretty nice cool day, only about 60 degrees. I can already tell I'm going to need bug spray for the mosquitoes around me. But I could tell just driving in on this road, it's flooded up again. Beavers are going to be a consistent problem here this year. This will be probably our third major unclogging. We were here a few weeks ago. The blockage was in the middle of the pipe about here. I, got, I dismantled it enough so it to completely slide through. It went down here and it clogged up the riverbed. So we removed part of it, threw it up here. You can hear someone target practicing at the gravel pit. So we'll get, we'll get this flowing again. This whole area is going to flood. Maybe we'll get it done before the rain starts getting heavy. Last time, two weeks ago, this is everything we got out of it. This blockage was right on the end. I'm hoping it's on the end again so I don't have to be in the cramped pipe because it takes a bit of time to dismantle. And we also have a trail camera in here. So we should have a nice time lapse of the beavers flooding this again and hopefully building the dam. I forget what time interval we put it on. I think every 30 minutes it made a clip. Well... It's not right near the edge, so yeah, I might want to get inside the pipe for this one, but we're going to unblock it again. Is our trail camera still there? Oh yes, trail camera's still there. Hopefully someone didn't touch it. Did I really put it in there that crooked? But still, it got a good angle. Very dense beaver dam. Look at that. It's almost six feet thick and holding up about two feet of water. Yeah, mosquitoes are bad. I gotta go back. I gotta get my big high boots on, bug spray, hard hat, and my um, headlamp. And camera number two. It's gonna take a little bit. I can tell the mosquitoes are gonna be very bad in that pipe. Mm. I've already got bitten multiple times. You want some? Yep. Big high boots. Because this one is almost at the end, but not quite. So I think I got to spend probably 20 minutes dismantling it, weakening it enough so the whole thing can slide through out of the pipe. This is not one that we can do like last time where we were able to just... Pull, it, pull the majority of it out of the entrance and up onto the edge of the road. Not the case today. They built it in pretty deep, but not deep enough. I think we'll have a good time-lapse footage of the beaver. I'll work on that later, and maybe we can get some good clips of them actually building. All right, everyone, I'm all geared up. Got camera number two. Got my magnetic tripod light. I have my headlamp on and my rake. So we're going to do a different thing today. The first time we came here, I gave you guys a view. We put a magnetic camera on the ceiling. But I'm going to put camera number one here at the entrance to stick it in the mud looking in at me. I'm going to stick extra camera lights to the ceiling so you can see pretty well. And we're going to go set up camera number two over here on the exit so you can see the dam when it starts sliding out as soon as we weaken it so I won't be bringing the camera in with me today just to be different so we're gonna put camera number two over here somewhere where, where it won't get washed away let's see where we can do that all right everyone so camera number two is now recording we're gonna leave it right here grab the rake I'm gonna go back to the other side of the road All right, there it is. It should be up enough where it won't get swept away. That's good camouflage. You wouldn't even know the camera was there. So I'm going to set you guys up on this side while I work on 
taking this apart. Hopefully the beaver doesn't steal our camera, which I'm gonna leave set up right here in the mud. Gotta lower the tripod a little bit so you can see in there, just like that. All right, yeah, we got a pretty good angle happening here. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. And this will also make a pretty good time lapse of all this going. All right. And we'll stick in an extra camera light on the ceiling in there. So you guys can see what I'm doing. Like this. Maybe off to the side so it won't be in my headroom. That made a difference, right? All right. Now I got my headlamp on. Let's see what we can do. We can pull out a couple big things from the end. Thankfully, this beaver dam looks like it'll be easier than the last, which was a pretty tough one. That was pretty tough, our last unblocking. I'm thinking we might be able to get this one pretty easily. And this is a big pond, so we don't have to conserve water like Sometimes I'll spend a lot of time behind it, weakening it before I let it go because the pond's not big enough to supply a high volume for a while. But there's enough water built up. This would go for hours helping us. So we're just gonna go right ahead getting the water moving and it, it will help us along the way with the unclogging. We already got water flowing that you'll see very soon on camera number two. The trickle will be out the other side within a minute. Ah, it's got mud in my eye and I tried to wipe it with possible bug spray. Bug spray with DEET always works the best, but it's sticky and stinky and it stings your eyes. I might get on in there on the other side of the dam and start pulling. <sighs> heavy stuff. Really heavy slop. This stuff may not look like much, but each one of those lifts it's a good 30 pounds of heavy waterlogged crap. There's also lots of leeches here, so. And the wild ones are, they're not picky at all. They'll come right after you. Let's zoom out a little bit until we actually go in there. Look how much water was in those clumps that it's actually trickling down the side of the pipe. Yeah, there's not much we can do here. We gotta get back on the downside part of the dam. And I just got my butt wet. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing on in there. Now I'm gonna be down in there for a while. get a little bit more slop out of here.
there's already a lot of water flowing between that stuff. So, at least it doesn't smell bad. Just a couple days ago, I did some of this work in Massachusetts and it smelled horrible, like they were using their own poop along with the mud. Or maybe they use a pile of moose poop. Wow, we're making a huge pile up on the road. Yeah, I gotta get downstream side. Almost went in the wrong way, I need the rake this way. Can't turn it around in there. We'll deal with that one later. Push it back into the pond. It's got a whole root ball.
What is this? The beaver's got something stuck. There's a big stubborn one here I've been struggling with now for a while. Why is it not moving? What's it attached to? This is like the key pin. We gotta get this thing out of here. It's not moving. It's stuck on something. I bet it has branches. This is a root ball. But where's the end of it? Oh, it comes all the way out here? Maybe I can pull it from this side. Oh, not this guy again. I'll deal with that one after. It's getting really hot in here. We'll try to deal with this root ball again. See it? Where does it go? There's still a good amount of debris here. The current is helping so much. Oh, it's moving the whole pile. Look at the other side. Oh, it got stuck. It'll go eventually, or I'll have to give it a push. There's like one thing in here, which is the keystone of the whole dam. Just cannot get it to come out yet. I bet there's branches on the far end. Something just moved. No, did I get it? Maybe, maybe it moved. It did not, no, wait. Ooh, cricket bush. I don't think it moved yet. Oh, my butt's even more wet. Here it is still there. There we go, finally! Let's see if we can use this as a battering ram down there. Just gets so hot in there, especially the amount of energy I'm using to be in that position. So it's flowing a lot better. I'd say there's still 20% of the dam or so. 
I'm pulling out this big piece now. We have to work from the other side now. All that debris got stuck on the way out. Just because there's not enough pressure. If I wasn't so out of breath, I'd probably have the strength to move it. Oh, just gotta regain my strength for a minute. Then we'll go back in there and try to push it some more. In the meantime, while I'm standing up straight, let's get a little bit here. Like I said, it's, it's only like 60 degrees today, but this oppressive humidity is a killer. What I'm doing now, loosening mud and debris, is a good thing. It's going to go down there and plug every little hole in the blockage, forcing more water pressure against it. And give me like five minutes, I'm going to go back down there and try again. But there's still like 80% of the dam here. I mean, 20%. When we get rid of that blockage, it'll be speeding through here so fast, we'll be able to easily get everything else. I tried to use that big piece as a battering ram. Wasn't great. And like before, once that goes through, we gotta make sure the river bed is clear enough where it doesn't back up. Yeah, we need water pressure. I need to get on the other end of that blockage. We'll leave our light in there right now, but let's get to the other side. Beavers are never going to stop. They need to be re relocated. It's very unlikely they'll just leave unless something is there scaring them. Yeah, see, once we get this cut to come out, it's gonna plug right there, which we just gotta move it up to the side so it doesn't back up. It backing up a little is not a problem, but when it's backed up, we won't have the water pressure in there to help move the things. This stuff's too heavy. You have to have that without a backhoe. Or a 30 minute job would suddenly turn into an all day job because you'd have to move every stick manually. All right, let me re extend the tripod legs. I don't think you guys will get hit by the flow right here because you're a little off to the side. I think it'll miss most of it, but I'm just going to pull from the end right there. Whatever I can. I want to show you guys what it looks like first. It's kind of cool. See how it basically made another dam right there? See that? This right here is all that mud and stuff that I was letting loose. Putting tons of pressure on this. Once I pull out a good amount of these sticks, the whole thing's gonna slide out and start blasting. Wow, we've only been here 20 minutes. Well, I assumed it would be less, but makes sense. I was struggling a good amount of that time. Nice and polished by the beaver. Oh, it got, it's starting to move, look at that. When they use crooked sticks, it works better in a dam, but it's so much harder just to take it down. Yeah, we're not even going to let this stuff go down and clog the riverbed. I'll just get whatever I can here. I know I can make this whole thing move, but I want to loosen it as much as possible. This piece is pretty rotten. And this piece is very heavy. Waterlogged all these things, which means they don't have the buoyancy to float. They're full of water. Ugh. 
It's, I've only been on it 20 minutes and I'm already very exhausted. This takes it out of you. I try to work really fast for a better outcome when we time lapse it. It always looks cooler. There's a root ball, pretty rotten. Wow, that was kind of cool. The beavers chewed each root off, so I'm guessing it was already eroded. That's got a lot on it. We got rid of most of the structure. I can't believe the dam hasn't come out yet, but if I know if I grabbed it with the rake, it would come out. Oh, there we go. Don't want to stand there, that's a lot of pressure. That dam could knock you down. It got stuck again. Almost out. The flow on the other side is about to increase so much. It'll probably tear down the rest of the dam before I even get back. There we go. Another tree trunk with a root ball. Here we go. We got most of the sticks out, so it might not clog the riverbed. Oh, yep, here comes the rest of the dam. I got it right out of the way just in time. That almost took out the tripod. All clear, it looks like. And are we gonna clog up the riverbed? Very little, it looks like. Let's get some of this out of here. Get it flowing. Get it out of the way. What's this? Not that bad at all. But yes, we did clog it, look. See that? We just gotta get that out of here real fast. Oh my gosh, camera number two, going down. I didn't think it would reach that high. We don't need camera number two anymore, we really don't. Off. Put that back up on the edge of the road. Take it away later. So it's a good thing we got it out of there. We got full flow. Now let's go back to the other side and see if it actually did take out the entire dam. Something else definitely slid through just from the increased flow. It's still sprinkling out, that's kind of nice. Not the humidity though. Now we got a lot of current going through. 
I can see it eroding. Can you see the cloudy water? It's pulling things apart. Beavers are gonna be angry. Let's figure out the tripod now. Which one got the short leg? There we go. Let's go on in there quickly. A lot of pressure. Camera could get taken. All right, all straightened out. A lot better than when we started. There is still a little bit of dam, but that'll be nothing. I did it again. Stepping over the dam, letting it go through. There's still about 15% really caked in there. It, the mud kind of hardened like concrete. And we got a spider already making a web on my light. He knows that light will attract some good bugs if it was to stay there. Every time I step, I'm letting debris pass through. It's building against my legs. I hope you guys don't fall over. Oh well, the camera is waterproof. Because I see a lot of pressure and a stick just hit the tripod. Still tearing up some stuff. We got it all the way through to this point. Yep, we got it. I don't want to forget the camera. So we'll put the camera here. I think everything's done. It feels like it. I feel rocks tumbling. We got everything. Open up the camera. Off. Hopefully we got good footage. Let's hope for the best. And spider friend, you can't be here. Hey. Whoa. Where'd you go? You gotta get off my arm. Come on. Spiders aren't scary. They usually, a, a lot of different types, they only bite you if you apply pressure to them like you're hurting them. If they're just on you, a lot of times you can just give them a tap and they'll crawl right off onto another object. But we also don't have any deadly spiders. The Northern Black Widow, it's possible to put a kid in the hospital, but it probably wouldn't do much to me. I'm pretty sure I've got bit by them before and it just left a big itchy bump for the rest of the day. Wow, there's a good amount built against the tripod. Surprised it didn't push you over. I guess it's because I pushed the legs so deep down into the mud. I'm folding you guys up now, and washing off all the mud and pollen debris all over it. Looks like we're just about set. That was a good unclogging. We did this, this is the third time this year. All of them two weeks apart. We'll be back in another two weeks. Maybe we'll have another big one. Look at it go. <coughs> uh, I couldn't spit it back out. I just swallowed a fly when I inhaled. That's like a tradition at this pipe. I've eaten probably six flies, maybe more over the years, unclogging this one location. Look at all that good water pressure. So much goodness there. This, the beavers downstream are gonna love this. Satellite maps show a pretty big beaver swamp and it should be getting to them just about now. Water doesn't flow that fast, but it's only about a half a mile downstream. Got about three miles before it hits another road. And the way this stuff spreads out and gets retained in other beaver ponds probably won't be any noticeable increase down at the next bridge. No more culvert pipes. 
this debris you see here, it's not gonna get down there. It'll get tangled around trees, stuck. And like I said, it's waterlogged, meaning can't float anymore. It'll sink in the next beaver pond, but I doubt it'll even make it there. That's a difference between doing this in the wilderness and doing it in a city. If it was a city, there'd be another pipe right downstream and you'd flood that out. The debris would certainly clog it, most likely. But there's no more pipes, bridge. Oh, uh, look at that. I don't know if you can see underneath the water. Yeah, look at that white rock. You see how much it's eroding? See all the cloudiness? It's creating a quite the undertow, bringing all kinds of debris out. But these beavers have a lot of building material. We've already lost maybe four inches, but that's almost two feet of loss that'll take place from this. Now, if they're gonna come right back, possibly tonight, it'll definitely be clogged in a few weeks. People may ask, why am I doing this? A couple weeks ago, I mean, a couple years ago, completely washed out the road. I'm pretty sure they trapped them. There was almost a two year break before new ones showed up this year. We are releasing a lot of water now. You saw when we first started, there was barely anything coming out of the pipe, meaning barely anything's feeding the pond. We let all this water out. They probably won't start building until at least tonight, if by chance it's a secondary pond. I know there's a huge beaver swamp upstream that I showed in one of my last videos. If that's where they live, they might not even come check on this for a week or two at a time. Meaning, all this water's drawing back and with that tiny amount of current that's feeding it, this will take weeks to get back up to that point and we're buying the road time. So I'm gonna do a few before and afters for you guys just to see the difference here today. Here's what the pipe looked like before we did anything. And here's what it looks like after. Pretty nice. Here's what the beaver dam inside looked like before. And here's what it looks like after. I always hope I have the footage. Sometimes I don't have the footage to do this, but I'm getting better in remembering because this is a newer thing we've been doing before and afters. Here's what the other side looked like before. And here's what it looks like after. That is pretty good. And we're gonna get one more angle sliding down. Good thing we're down here because I gotta wash off myself a little bit before I get back in the vehicle. Pretty muddy. Not that bad though. All right, going pretty well. Here's what over here looked like before. And here's what it looks like after. All right, everybody, we are done. We're not leaving a camera here this time, but we will review that footage and see if it got anything good. Until next time, I hope today's video was interesting. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Take a look at this very fresh yeah. road. It looks well, really see, good. Nobody's been on it except for a, a tractor. Yeah. Last time we came up on this road, it was so washed out. We're coming up upon a huge washout that the company they, they fixed the whole road, they washed out, but they left the pipe plugged with things that are too big to be moved without machinery. Right around this corner was a washout that was nearly four feet deep. I got down inside and showed it was about up to my chest or so. Right here. Makes you wonder why they wouldn't put up a bridge. It's happened every year for the past four, I think, at least three. Well, the road's nice and smooth, but in certain areas it makes it pretty slippery because it's yeah. pretty muddy. Yeah. The trees are so green. 
every day in the forecast is rain. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that mud caught me. Yeah. And I gotta keep myself in the middle of the road now. Slippery. You know, I, I'm trying to wear out the factory tires on the truck first. Mm -hmm. And then I want to get some very rugged ones, so hopefully that stuff won't happen. E even the dealership told me that I should probably get some good ones on here that won't puncture as easily. But I've never had a puncture out here, even with the cheaper tires. Got to slow it down on these muddy hills. This is very deep mud right here. But, you know, the dealer won't sell you a truck that already has the rugged tires, even though it's an off-road vehicle. Because, oh. they, because they say that um, over 90% of people who buy an off-road vehicle will never actually go off-road with it. So they want the tires that give a better on-road yeah. ride, which yeah. are softer. Yeah. yeah, it looks like this area has been misty more because we're going up in elevation from where we just unclogged. And up here, it looks like it's been raining and misting more as we go up the mountain, so the road conditions are just going to deteriorate, so we got to keep it slow for the rest of the road, or at least until we get to the end of where they're grading. When they grade, they only usually take care of a few miles a day, so we just got to get beyond this part. Yeah, look at this. You can still see the washouts on the edge. They didn't completely fill in yet. Yeah, when we came up here a couple weeks ago, the washout there was so bad, it was like a two-foot just ledge leading into the drainage ditch probably wouldn't tip over but to get stuck yep look at this the road's nice now well, now we can go faster they didn't grade anymore past this I didn't see the machine parked before or after that so I don't know where they drove it for the night roads very nice now until we get to some washouts because it looks like they didn't touch it we're still going to see some washouts that were here we the first noticed over a month ago yep there's still going to be some washouts if you guys seen those videos right here see the drainage ditch oh boy pretty steep yeah right here it looks like a three foot ledge and that's just the beginning of it we haven't even got down there's certain parts got to be in four-wheel drive you go down such steep little things right here you can tell the whole drainage ditch was crossing because it filled in with dirt most of the damage on this road was just inadequate maintenance oh here's one of the worst ones it's very tight here yep do you see to my left there's a pretty big drop yeah, with a cold pipe over there yeah <laughs> could get stuck there if i felt on either side of that yeah Right here's a pretty big washout. We did a dry unclogging here, so it wouldn't get any worse, but they built the road pretty rocky, so it would have been way worse if they just built the road with dirt. And that one we also unclogged last year too, so maybe we minimize the damage at that one. this pipe road crews did not get to it yet but here are the ribbons that we put up a few weeks ago the reason I mark this one and not the other ones because if you're already to this point on the road you should know the roads already in bad shape it's because right beneath us is hollow it could open up further I noticed there was a sinkhole that was even under the part we were just under. That's because the entire bottom of the culvert is rusted away. So as water's passing through, it's washing out beneath the road unseen. That'll eventually collapse more with a heavy vehicle. All right, we just came to a section where, well, why is that railing in the middle of the bridge? Can we even go across that? What's going on up here? We may have to turn around and go back. <laughs> Jeez. 
Let's get out and inspect. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, no, I think it... Oh, it is a washout. Did someone hit it, and, or they just don't want us going forward? No, there's this, a big hole there. Because this road was fine. I think there's a big... So, will we make it across this bridge? I don't think we can go through that. No. No way, no way we can go through that. Wow, and to think... Um, yeah, we drove over this two weeks ago and a month ago, and that damage was already probably there unseen. Someone went through it. Just look, the foundation is even coming apart. I kind of want to go underneath the bridge and see what we got. You see right here, every year the riverbed is higher and higher as rocks from the mountain come down. And Yep, it looks like it was even probably crossing here. They got a bulldozer right there to fix it. Yeah. Looks like some pickup trucks were able to go through here. Yeah, so underneath the bridge, let's see what we got. Yeah, that's how it happened. Look at the other side too. What do you think? Could we drive through this maybe? I'm thinking about it. It's possible, put it in four low and crawl control. All right, putting down the windows so I can hear what he's saying, and we're going to see if we can drive in four low right through the, the river. We're going to try this. Because that would save us a lot of time. I've never done something like this before. All right, we're in four-wheel drive, but we should be in four low. Neutral, four low. Just remembering how to use this. tip over. I've never done anything like this. First time. Uh. Does it look okay? I actually want to back up a little. Maybe run over the side a little more. You think I'll make it? I, you know, guys, I'm not used to having a vehicle that can do this, so I'm still exploring. <laughs> oh, wow. That looks really high, but I'm not used to this car. All right. I'm going very slow, and if I feel if I feel, oh my gosh, we're not touching the bottom. Wow. Oh, boom. Oh, he's recording me. No, he's got a phone call. This is the part. Oh. We're, 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 we're hitting bottom, but we got skid plates. Wow. We're making it. Should have got a truck years ago. All right, here. We made it and we didn't even touch the bottom much. <laughs> oh. What did I do wrong? Oh. I'm just tr There we are. Back in fort. I mean, too low. I mean, we're back in too high. Okay. Oh. Wow. No, that was good. I couldn't believe I, uh, I couldn't believe that this car made it through without barely touching anything. I know. I, I'm so used to driving a car you with know, eight be, inches of because clearance. Because of that lift kit. Yep. Oh, yeah. I, I, definitely. Yeah, I only lifted it like what was it, two inches, and it made such a difference. Yeah. I couldn't believe I made it through that. That was awesome. Yeah. Our capabilities are way better than they were. I did not even I, I did not use crawl control there. I just put it in four, yeah. four low and because yeah. because I, I wanted to be in full control of it. And the right. first the first part because of, maybe because I'm so high up, I I thought maybe I was gonna tip over. That's why I backed up and moved over a little more where it wasn't as crooked. Yeah, so hopefully we don't run into anything else. Oh, that's your seatbelt. Oh. 